Hey everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. <laughs> and I am honored to have uh, my guest today, Monk Coleman. He is a three-time pro physique athlete. He is a Team Clean Machine ambassador, so proud to have him with us. And he is the author of Love Over Fear, a guide to peace and purpose. He's also a dear friend and just one awesome dude. Oh, <laughs> Welcome, Monk. <laughs> What's that? How are you doing? You know what? Good. Always, always I was always good to chat with you, my friend. It was my fault being late because I was just like, I thought someone was going to notify me on Facebook, and I didn't. <laughs> then I started panicking, and then I'm here, though. We are here now. And that is yeah. what's, uh, where we can only always be, right? Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, so good to see you, my friend. Um, good to see you too. Congratulations on your book. Um, now, obviously, we're both into physical fitness and taking care of ourselves, but uh, you know, I see fitness as the whole enchilada. Really, um, I know you and I both had very deep personal experiences that allowed us to transcend, not just in a love for ourselves so that we brought on health and fitness, but a love for others. And that include the animal kingdom, which led to veganism, but also a greater love, this bigger love that we can tap into is much bigger than we are as a human individual. And I think it's, all of that love, that love of self and the connection with self, the love of our environment and gra gratitude for the environment that we live in, our friends, our family, our loved ones, and even all the rest of the animals we share this planet with. But then that bigger, expansive love. And when we can tap into that, it's very powerful. And I think for many of us, you and me both, we found a purpose, a purposeful life within that experience. And for me, I love that you put that together in a book so that people, because, you know, I hear so many people listen to gurus and, and, and people who are very inspirational and they're like, well, that's great that they did that, but how do I get there? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I love that you put that guideline really in a book of really kind of almost a step by step process, a how to manual, almost to speak. I love that. What inspired you to go that route instead of the typical route of, you know, empowerment books? I mean, this is definitely about empowerment, but I think it's better, than, greater than that. Well, you said it, you said it, you said it already. It's big love, it's right? Big love. big love. The all encompassing love does, has nothing to do with romantic relationships or anything right. like that. It's what we are. It's our existence. And when we start to come back home to who we really are, we express this big love through the deeds and our lifestyle and what we do, yes. how we eat, how we move, our relationships, how we treat our children, how we treat our pets. You know, so when we start to tap into this big love, which what we are, like I just said, we, we start to be it. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't have to do anything. We're, we're now in a state of being instead of doing. Mm -hmm. And then so when you allow yourself to be receptive, right, when you live from this place, yes. things are going to come to you. Mm -hmm. I like to say it's like having your antennas up, being wide open. <laughs> yeah. Right. But when, right. You're, when you're wide open, sometimes things just pop in like, boom, when your vessel is clear and clean, you're mm -hmm. able to receive messages that you normally wouldn't have in a different type of lifestyle, right? We know our, we're all inner energy bodies, right? When we clean out that energy, we're receptive. Mm -hmm. we, we receive things. We have room for things to be received. Before, when I was living my other lifestyle, it was too busy. Everything was too busy. My mind was, was full of energies that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And there's no room for anything else. There's no room to tap into and receive messages from whatever you want to call it. God, higher self, source, the universe, whatever is always sending you messages. But most of the time we are not in a position to receive them. Right. Just like dogs 
hear sounds that we can't because they are in a position they can they're on a vibration a frequency where they can hear these things right. well we have to be on that frequency to where we can receive these messages from god right right and this is how this book was, was created i was going to do a speaking engagement one day and i said i'm gonna write some stuff down this time because i don't never write anything down when i go speak i just go do it right Whatever comes, comes. I'll be the medium, right? Whatever comes to me, someone needs to hear it. Maybe it's just one person in this crowd, but they need to hear what I got to say today. Mm -hmm. So this time I'm like, I'm going to write these 10 things down and I'm going to go up there and I'm going to talk about these things. I'm trying to be structured. I'm not a structured type of guy. You already know this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the opposite of structure. So I wrote it down, but then I went up there to speak and I didn't use it at all. Mm -hmm. But I had it in my notebook somewhere. You know, I write everything down in notebooks or whatever. Mm -hmm. I wrote it all down. And then I was watching a video. And this is the receptive part, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is a message. You know, everything is always talking to you. Yes. Giving you uh, guidance, you know, giving you direction. So I'm listening to a YouTube video. And this guy goes, what are you giving your audience to take away when you speak? I was like, okay, my words, but you know, words, words, pew, 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 gone, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. My energy, right? I'm gonna give them my love, I'm gonna give them my yes. energy. But when they go back to their normal life, they go back into that, on that hamster wheel. Yep. Back to life is, you know, as normal. And that was great for them there and they were super inspired or whatever, but then they go back to the everyday mundane, just day in, day out, getting up. I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back in there and I'm gonna find those things that I wrote down for that speaking engagement and I'm gonna start breaking them down and I'm make a book out of it. Now, anybody that knows me knows, for one, I, I never used to read at all. Mm -hmm. I didn't read a book from cover to cover till probably 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Not one, not in school, not even the books that were required for us to read. I would just cliff notes or, hey, what's in this book when the test came? Mm -hmm. That wasn't my thing. But what happens is when you start to work your way back to who you are, your transformation, yes. your life and the things you do change with it. Right. Yep. So I, I was never a book reader. Now, all of a sudden, I'm so intrigued and so thirsty for this knowledge. Like almost all these things that were happening to me, I wanted to find out why it was happening. Mm -hmm. So I started diving into these books like what's going on with me because i don't understand it but i know a lot's going on so when i start reading this book it's almost like confirmation for me mm -hmm. for what's happening in my life right yeah. so i experience it first i think this is really important for people right because a lot of people read books and then try to make their experiences right mirror those books right i'm gonna read this how my spiritual life or my path is supposed to go and i'm gonna try to make it happen like that oh, <laughs> that's not it. So for me, I had all these crazy experiences with no knowledge of what was going on. And then I got the books, didn't know what were in the books, but started reading them. They sounded interesting to me. And I'm going, whoa, that just happened to me. This mm -hmm. is happening to me. This is currently happening to me. Mm -hmm. So I got to experience that that transformation for real instead of thinking, well, maybe did I made it, did I make it happen with my mind mm -hmm. or did it really happen? Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's super important for us to experience these experiences without trying to make an experience to actually right. experience this experience. What is going on with me? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? So even if you read something, you say, don't try to make that fit because everybody's spiritual path or experience is going to be different. Yep. What happens to me may not happen to you. So I wanted to make this book to where these 10 principles so I talk about fear and, and, and love, of course, because that, that's in the title and love is what we are. So I, I spent most of my time talking about that. But um, if you implement these steps and you are ready to make a change, these steps can help you. I'm not I'm not saying it's going to do it for you, but it can be the catalyst for that transformation. Right. It, be, it can be things that you can do. Simple simple things that make a huge difference in your life. Mm -hmm. And we don't, most most of these things people know, right. but they're just not, they're not implementing them in their life on a regular basis. Or putting them all together in a cohesive way to say, 
ah, now it looks, you know, getting little bits and pieces like, we're in a, you know, internet world where everything's a meme or a soundbite or, you know, things. It's like, okay, those are nice little tidbits. But really, when you lay it all out and you see the perfection in it and the way it just naturally flows together, the way love is, love and fear. Let's talk about that for a second, because those are really the two choices you have. You either move to something or away from something, right? You're either attracting something to you or pushing it away from you. Those are your two choices. That's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all. The, that's what. That's what there is. Everything falls under those two umbrellas. First yeah. of all, before I continue, thank you so much for being a part of the book, for mm -hmm. being in there, for writing what you wrote because that's super powerful. <laughs> okay. What was the question? <laughs> love, love over fear. Now, I, I know, you know, I see, look, I, and I come from experience. I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not coming from a higher place than anyone. I'm coming from living Jeff's life and, and all, the, all that I went through. You and I both came from, uh, you know, I came from a self-destructive place. You were in that spot too as well. And a lot of that is clinging to our fears, and we don't realize that when we cling to this energy, which is self-destructive by nature, fear wants to stop, wants to stop existing because our love wants to come forward, wants to be expressed. So fear is trying to die. And if you cling to fear, it will take you down with it because it wants to stop to allow love, the true nature of everything, everything that's living, our true nature is to love. And, and, you know, when you cling to fear, it pulls you down with it. And I saw myself going through self-destructive choices. It was amazing when that light bulb moment for me happened, when that heart opening happened, it's like all those things I was clinging to just like fell off me. It was like, I literally felt like all of these things that I made were myself, right? Jeff is this, Jeff is an alcoholic, Jeff is this, Jeff is, all these things just like fell off me. They were just things I was holding on to. And when I let go, they just went away. That's that ego like, death. Is, is. That wasn't me. No, it's you know, the ego. And that, and, and that, is, that is the identity that we create that, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. I, I'm not allowed to do this. You know, nobody lets me do that or somebody hurt me and therefore I'm not going to let that happen. All of these, all this crap we make up and stick on ourselves like armor are just weighing us down. And we can bust free of that. We can just let it go. We can just walk away from it. It really is that easy. I know it's the hardest thing to think of because when right. you're holding tight to that, you feel like you're going to die if you let go. <laughs> it, it literally is. That fear is the ego. Yeah. It, it's the death. It's a fear of your identity mm -hmm. dying. What yeah. you have created for yourself, the identity that you, um, that you identified with, that fake you. Yep. It doesn't want to die. Right. It wants to stay there. So it's going to play tricks with you. Yeah. Like if I do this, this is not me. This, yeah. this is me. This is not me. So I don't want to lose my identity. I don't want to lose this right. ego life because I'm feeling like I'm going to die. But you literally are going to die in a, in a way. Yeah. But that, that, new, that new life that exposes itself after that ego dies, that's who you really are. And getting back to you said you had two, there's two different, uh, the, you have love or fear to choose from. Mm -hmm. So in the book, the quote by John Lennon says it all, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read it. There are two basic motivating forces, fear and love. When we are afraid, we pull back from life. Yeah. When we are in love, we open up to all that life has to offer with passion, excitement, and acceptance. That's it. One is drawing you in, one is pulling you away from self. And it applies to almost everything we do. It applies to our career path. It applies to our health, the, the foods that we choose. I didn't realize I was choosing foods that hurt me on purpose because I was punishing myself. I was trying to kill this self, right? because I wasn't happy with who I was being. I was being this thing that I thought I had to be, that I thought somebody else said I must be, you know? 
And when I let go of that, all of those choices that I was doing, the self-destructive choices, and for those of you who are struggling with weight problems or struggling with food choices or food addictions, this is all comes from right in here. You know, you can let go of those things and allow your true loving self. Because when you do that, you start choosing foods that are good for you because you want to love yourself. You know, you choose actions that are good for you. You choose relationships that are positive to you, that are life affirming, that are, you know, supportive. Um, you and I are both very fortunate to have attracted amazing partners in our lives. And, and you have an incredible daughter who is just a beaming expression of self-driven purpose, self-love. And, um, so talk about that for a moment. Um, well, I, I'm going to just go back a little bit to what you were saying about that, the inner thing that you have going on. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening is we're, we're not aligned. And when we're not aligned with who we are, right, we think mm -hmm. we're something. And then our, our, in our deepest, in our soul, we know that this is not what it is. Right. So you got this inner conflict, right? You got your true self, which is your real self. Then you got this made up self and something doesn't feel right. It's not in alignment. It's almost like putting, trying to screw a jar on and it, and it doesn't thread right. It's right. just, it's not working. You right. know, there's something wrong. Yes. You know that there's something is wrong in this whole scenario. So what we do a lot of times is we don't know what to do. So guess what we do? We drink, we drug, we don't, it's uncomfortable and we don't know how to fix it. Right. right. So this book, if you feel uncomfortable, because I was there in, in the my story part of it, you know, I was there. Yeah, I was there. I'm there with you. I'm mm -hmm. still there. I understand you. Right. But once you understand that beyond that, that that anxiety, beyond that depression, beyond that, this is just your soul telling you, look. This is not it. You got to go deeper. Right. Go deeper. You don't need to avoid what you're feeling. You need to, you need to lean in. And that's where you're going to, when you get through that, when you lean into that fear, when you lean into that anxiety, you're going to find out that it's not so solid. You think it's solid now, but it's not. And once you get to the other side, you're like, wow, this whole time I was trying to avoid this. This whole time I was drinking, trying to get rid of this. All I had to do was be with it, make friends with it, sit with it. And watch it start to dissipate. Watch it start to just not be solid. You can walk through it. It's like a cloud. You got to understand once you lean into that, you lean in a cloud. And what you, if you lean into a cloud, what happens? Mm -hmm. right through it. There's nothing to fear. You're standing back on the other side saying this is solid, but it's not. Right. So, yeah. So when we were talking about my daughter, you want me to talk about my daughter or what do you want me to talk about? Yeah. So. Okay, so you and I have both come to a place where we found an inner peace, an inner power, too, and a sense of empowerment, basically loving ourselves once again. And that's how we can take the stage and, and, and win a competition, because we're bringing that, I have something to share. You know, when I had my breakthrough, for me, what really shifted was me looking out for, outward for something to make me happy. And when I tapped into this amazing love that was coming from me, I was like, wow, okay, it's not about what I'm here to get. It's for me, it's about what I'm here to give. That's where I find my joy. That's where I find my 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 expression really anchors in feeling like I can contribute to something in this world. I think we all want to contribute to something in this world, but you got to recognize it in yourself, the beauty, the power, this love, this big love that can come through us. You know, we can be that channel. But when we find that peace, when we find that acceptance in ourselves, and then we go to share with the world and we find people who are conflicted, who are challenged, who are bought into systems and realities that aren't true and that are holding them back from being their, their greatest self, you know, when you go into a chaotic world from a peaceful place, <laughs> how do you maintain that? How do you stay centered 
and bring that to people in a way that inspires change within them. Well, you know, with growth comes understanding, mm. right? So, you know, even if people attack you, even if people say bad things about you, you know that that's not who that person is. Right. It kind of takes the person, it, it takes it being personal. It takes that that part of it out. Right. You know, it's just coming from a um, from ignorance, not knowing who they are, because like I said, I truly believe we all came from love. We all are love. And all you have to do is go back to your childhood. And mm -hmm. when you're a very young baby and you're, you haven't been programmed yet, what do you yeah. want? She, I want hugs from my mom. I want right. love. I want to give love. All I need is food and water to stay alive. But other than that, I just want to love. That's what I am. Yep. And then we, we, we receive our program. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes back to uh, the growth, you go, okay, that person attacked me, but they're not really attacking me. That program is attacking me. Right. Well, when that program attacks me, I don't have to take it personal and attack that beautiful, loving being that's underneath that program. Right. Right. So we know everybody has transformative value because. We've been there, right? Mm -hmm. So why would I judge this person for being where they are now? Right. I'm no better than they are. I'm no higher than they are. I'm no more important than they are. And I've been in that person's shoes. Yeah. So why would I judge them for where they're at on their path? Mm -hmm. And what they're doing to me is none of my business. Unless it's, I mean, of course, if you they attack me physically, I'm gonna have to defend myself. But what I'm saying is their verbal attacks, what they say about me, what they think about me is none of my business. Right. That's something that they have to deal with. I think our life is, is our outer life is a reflection of our inner life, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can look at everything as a mirror of yourself, if we can all honestly look at ourselves, we, we, we can figure out what we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. What do we need to deal with, right? Because what we're giving off internally, what we're giving off to the world is, is going to come back to us. So when we go out of our houses, our homes, into the public, how do people respond to us? How do they react to us? If everybody's attacking you, maybe you should do some digging in, within yourself and wonder, well, why is everybody attacking me? Mm -hmm. Right. Why is everybody? Because when you look out, it's just a reflection of your inner world. Mm -hmm. So if everybody's mean and angry and hateful, if these are the people you come in contact with. If your friends are back backstabbing, talking behind your back, stealing from you, you got to understand this is the frequency that you're on. This is what you're bringing into your world. Law of attraction is an actual law. Mm -hmm. You're bringing into your world which the, things that are at the frequency of yourself. So everybody has had an experience where they were so in love, nothing could, nothing, nothing could make them upset, right? Say you're wide open, nothing can make you upset. It doesn't matter what anybody says to you, nothing. That's how, how full of love you are, mm -hmm. right? And it seems like when you're in that place, it seems like everybody wants a piece of that. All this love just keeps coming to you. Now, on the flip side, you wake up in a bad mood, you stub your toe, and then it seems like everything just snowballs. You go out in the traffic, someone cuts you off, someone flips you off. People, the, the grocery store line doesn't move, you know, people price check. And it seems like it's because this is the energy you're rolling with, right? And it really comes down to per, per, perception. Perception. How are you looking at all these things that are going on in your life? Right. What, kind, what set of eyeballs are you using? Right. So back then it was really a set of victim eyeballs. I'm always the victim no matter what. And now when I even get stuck in traffic or do these are opportunities. What is it trying to tell me? What do I need to work on? Right. What what is this moment? Because all these moments are perfect. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it? Why? Why am I in this line? Why are these? Why did I run into these people? Right. So today, and I'm telling you, because I've been so lifted lately mm -hmm. when I go out and I can feel it. If you're really in tune with yourself, you can feel your vibration and you can oh, you yeah. can tell when you're just like you are vibing high <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't have to do with anything that's going on. You just feel it. But yeah. the interesting thing is, like today, when I went, I sit outside the, the coffee shop and drink my tea and read my books because 
that's how I came up with the book in the first place. That's my little spot where I go and get creative. Mm -hmm. And even though they shut the doors down, it's not going to stop me. So I go there, get my tea, and I sit outside. Well, the last couple of days, just random people from all walks of life just <laughs> start speaking to me. Not random. Not but random. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I do, yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? It's all air quotes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they, how you, I mean, from old white ladies to young black, I mean, every walk of life, how you doing today? And then I know that's because of the state I'm in right now that this is attracting these people. Yeah. People that normally wouldn't talk to me are just, well, I had people to sit up and walk, walk and stand next to me before they got the tea and just, just didn't know them from anywhere. Full on conversation. Hey, how's it going? Blah, 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 blah. One of the people today I gave, a book too, because someone something was telling me, look, get this dude a book. This is what happened. Funny story. Yesterday, I'm sitting down on the little bricks that's outside the coffee shop, and there's a parking spaces, and there's rarely anyone that's open, so people park, you know, they're coming and going. Yesterday, this guy pulled into the parking spot right in front where I'm sitting, full on conversation. Today, he comes back. That's the only park parking space is open, right in front of me. Full on conversation. I gave him a book. That was a sign for me, like, okay, he needs this. And then we started talking and certain things in common. And then he left. And then I was like, I know for a fact that I was supposed to give him this book, right? There's always these signs and that's out there. The universe is always guiding you. We have an inner GPS that if we're in tune with it, we know what moves to make. And it sounds crazy, but it's not. It's just like some of the things that you do that you're even unconscious of that works out so perfectly for you. It's that intuition that we have, but you can really be in tune with that intuition. You know, when it comes to picking your mate, when it comes to uh, your job, your career, what you want to do, how you want to move, it's almost automatic that you're you're making the right decisions yes. because you are so tapped in. Yep. And Ishiana is tapped in. <laughs> oh, all the way. She is so she doing ballet now, but she is so tapped in, and I look in amazement of what she's doing. And people say, "Oh, you're a, it has nothing to do with me." I stepped back and allowed her to do her thing. The only that, thing that I, that's a good thing. That's a good thing in its own. A lot of people don't. The <laughs> only thing that I did because when she came into this world, I was just. I had just stopped. She never seen me take a drink. She never seen my old lifestyle. So her whole vision of me was me healing. This is what she watched the whole time. All different stages of it. Right. She watched the whole thing happen. And through this whole thing, she seen me meditating. She seen me giving and being kind and compassionate. That's what she seen. So if anything, I'll take credit for a pretty good example Mm -hmm. without being pushy and telling her what to do. She came to veganism on her own because she used to ask questions. And if she's going to ask me questions, I'm going to give her answers. Right. So her question to me about the meat was, why don't you eat it? I said, I just don't want to do harm to animals. Made sense to her. It makes mm -hmm. sense to all children. Yes. It makes sense to every single child. Right? Well, so no, no one, no one, no human being, unless they're just totally sadistic, sadistic and sociopathic, wants to harm anything, really. Uh, it's just we're disconnected from that. Um, we see it in a package and it's just food to us. We don't understand the whole process of, of that connection. But it is getting that connected. But, you know, when you're talking about being in that zone, I can so relate. And, and some days it's, it's stronger than others. Um, but when you tune in and when you start opening and you start feeling what that feeling feels like, it's like, okay, I know this feeling. I know this vibration. For, for any of those who are athletes, if you ever like are a runner or a distance athlete or something like that, where you get into that zone where the running almost just starts becoming effortless. You're just in it. You're in the flow. It Your runs you. Your body you. is just taking over and yeah. doing its thing. And it's it's almost freeing. Like you can almost have an outer body experience because you're not thinking about it anymore. You allowed your mind to be free because you're trusting your body to do the right thing. And that, that trust 
gives you that degree of separation, that freedom. And I think if we can do that with our emotional selves and retrust our emotional self to say, I trust I will make good decisions for myself. You will start allowing that to happen. It's one thing to try to think, what is the best decision? You know, what is the right way to work out? What is the right, you know, right thing to say in my job? If you just release and let that flow naturally, your body, just like in running, your body will know what to do. Your greater energy will guide you on that. And when you get into that flow, magical stuff starts to happen. I swear it does. Hey, hey. I'm telling you, when you when you when you are in the zone, see, people don't understand you can be in the zone in your life. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a sport. It doesn't have yes. to be basketball. It doesn't have to be running. It, you are just so tapped in yes. that you're hitting a 30 foot jump shot shot in life. Yeah, right? exactly. Everything is it's just you you make shots on accident. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Air yeah. quotes again on yeah. accident. It's like you're so available. Yeah. To infinite possibilities, that the the things that come are so high because you you're accepting anything that comes. That trust thing you were talking about, yeah. You trust it's gonna gonna all work out, and then it works out for the best, even better than you thought it can work out. Right? You just allow it to take over you and your energy. So when we start to doubt ourselves, it brings our vibe down. It brings our frequency down. Yeah. Right. So the choices that we have to choose from from this lower state, guess what? They're going to be lower choices. Right. Right. And that's why I did it said in the book, life in the basement. Those are your <laughs> lowest choices. Right. Yeah. So this, this is my uh, analogy of of that when it comes to our vibration. Right. You have basement, first floor, second floor, third floor. Right. As you elevate yourself, as you become more uh, connected to self your higher self, more connected to God, source, the universe, you start to level up. And on these levels, your group of your, your choices change. Mm -hmm. So they're available to you now because you're at that frequency, right? Mm -hmm. So on the, in the basement, your choices are drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol, just any type of addiction, right? Dysfunction. This is what you have to choose from. You're never gonna be living from that space and, and get this great person that comes into your life. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. You're not there. Right. You're going to get that dysfunctional person just like you. It's going to mirror you, like I said earlier. Mm -hmm. As you elevate yourself, the best way to change your, your experiences is to, is to change yourself. So as you level up, you're attracting different. And the yep. more you level up, the more you're attracting different. The better their experiences are. The more elevated your life gets, period. I, I posted a, a, a graphic that had a picture of a butterfly on it intentionally. And it said, when we focus on what we fear we're going to lose in change, instead of what we are going to gain, we inhibit our body and ourselves from making that change. So a lot of people are like, yeah, but if I change, you know, people are going to judge me or or someone's not going to like me. Yeah, but new people will like you for the new person that you're being. <laughs> so don't don't be afraid of what you're going to lose in this equation. Look at what you are going to gain. And it's going to be things that you aren't even aware of yet because you're not being that yet. <laughs> yeah, check this out, man. That you hit it right. You hit it. And here's the thing I'm going to tell anybody that's going through this process right now. There's going to be a lonely patch, yeah. right? Yes. There's going to be a lonely patch. There's going to be an in-between space where your old friends are trying to pull you back in. Yeah. And you don't know who your new friends are going to be. And just because you have so much history with these people does not mean you need to take a step backwards. Right. Stay in that space. Yeah. Be lonely. Find yourself, go deeper. And I'm telling you, when you start to change yourself from the inside out, you know what? Amazing people yes. will start to come into your life. Yes. You will now have elevated yourself to a level where these beautiful angels are coming into your life that are, I don't have anybody that comes into my life now that is not at that level, mm -hmm. right? People I run into are doing the same thing I'm doing. 
at the same time, back when I was doing other stuff, people that I ran into, they were doing the same thing I was doing. Right. So be patient. Yeah. You don't have to step back for company. Get to know yourself more. And when those new people come in, believe me, it's going to be your real tribe. These are the people you're going to grow with. These are the people that you're going to have functioning relationships with. These are the people that you don't have to worry if they're going to steal from you. Right. right? Exactly. These, are, these are the people you can trust with your children and your dogs and your pets. Right. right? These are the people that are going to pick you up when you stumble. These are going to be people that's always going to support you through everything, no matter what. So and, and don't here's, step back from it. Here's one of the beautiful things. To me, when I learned the difference between service to self and service to others, wow, what a liberating moment for me. It, it was this fear that I'm not going to get what I need if I don't go out and try to earn it or get it or take it, you know, service to self, right? But when I turned that equation around and I started sur- focusing more on service to others, and everything I need just started showing up, <laughs> you know, it just started coming to my life and I'm like, oh, well, shoot, I don't even have to try. Just be the one giving and people will see what you need and say, here, thank you for that. I'm going to give it to you. What a better place of existence to come from when everybody's given to each other. Everybody's focused on everybody else's needs. So let me help you with that. What a beautiful world that would be if we're all just sitting around. How can I help you the best? You know, it, what what it, level of, of, of leveling up can we experience? But we can do this on small things. It doesn't have to be global. It's yeah. just for me chatting right here and we're talking about it. You know? check, check this out. And I used to do it sneak. I used to just like, when it got to a point where it, like every homeless person I seen, I would just go give them money. I would look for them at times, right? But there is, I used to work in San Francisco over by the baseball park and it, I used to train somebody right out at the, um, by the water, it was very beautiful. And I don't know if you remember back in the day, I used to always take pictures of sunsets because I used to watch the sun come up right there and it was so beautiful, mm-hmm. all the birds and the sun and stuff. But there was this regular homeless guy that used to walk by and I used to catch him every time and give him money, right? No one knew I was doing this. this was, we almost had like a relationship like that, right? A little, little and, understanding. And, and when, I, when, I, when I found out how good that made me feel, mm-hmm. I wasn't the one giving, I was literally receiving. Yes. I was, the love that I was getting was way more than this paper money could ever give me, right? So one day he came by and I think it was Christmas. I think I gave him like 40 bucks or something like that. He says, no, 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 I don't want it. It's like, you're gonna go broke giving me this money. I said, nah, I'm not gonna go broke giving you this money. I said, go get you something for Christmas. Right, go give you something for Christmas, and just the look on his face, I'm just like, I'm the I'm I'm the selfish one, because that look on his face was everything. Mm-hmm. That look on his face, and it was just between us. This was our thing until I stopped working in that area. Right, he knew I would chase him down if he tried to avoid me. This was our thing, and it was a love thing. Yes, and we know that that that's that's one process. Yeah. We're all getting from this process. Nobody's losing anything from this process. No. It is the circulation of love is what that is. And it's not, you don't I'm not the one doing something great. It's a great, uh, uh, what can I say? It's a, just a great process in general, right? Mm-hmm. Giving and receiving is one yeah. process and we both yeah. benefit from it. Yeah. And, and it, it becomes so easy. You don't have to try. There's not this big effort, this onus. There's not this constant fear. Am I going to get enough to eat? Am I going to earn enough to this? Am I going to do, you know, is, is, are people judging me because of my income or my job or my career? Or It's like, man, you can let go of all of that and just let yourself come through. You know, when uh, one of my favorite uh, professors, um, uh, Joseph Campbell, uh, I don't know if you've read any of him, but he, he did comparative religions. He looked at all the different truths and wisdom within all the different religions and saw a commonality that this is just human beings finding ways of expressing, exploring, and experiencing 
love. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, you can tell a million different stories and it's all a lot of the same thing. So he just saw the beauty within all of it, the intrinsic humanity within all of it. And, you know, he was saying, follow your bliss. And when you can do what you really love, that, that sense of your purpose, you're a unique individual. Everybody is born into this world that has special gifts that are unique from somebody else's, right? And when you can share those gifts with someone, you will rise to your highest self because that is the best you can be, right? And when you're given the best you can be, that's my, my father was a professor and he said, um, he said, Jeff, the best way I've found to learn is by teaching because you want to go out and find the absolute best information because that's the best gift you have to give. Have you been watching my, uh, I did an IG live today. Have you been, <laughs> you, you, you were spying on me, huh? No, I wasn't. I should be though. <laughs> so what, what I said today was everybody's, everything that you experience is a teacher. Yes. Right. It could be a dog. It could be a tree. It could be a cat. It could be a drug addict. It could be. Yes. Everybody is teaching you something just right. like giving and receiving, learning and teaching. It's one process. Right. And I want to go back to giving and receiving because I had a I had a real issue with the receiving part at one point. Mm -hmm. because I thought it was a uh, I thought it was a selfish thing. Right. So when I would do for people and and then people would want to do for for me, whether, you know, someone I didn't know or someone I didn't know or whatever. And they was like, no, I want to, I want to do this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. I didn't understand that I was breaking the loop. Yep. I was not le letting them express the love that they had. I was saying, no, I do not want it. And we all know how we feel when we do something from the heart and someone rejects it. Right. It breaks that link. There's not this giving and receiving loop, this love loop. But we're, and I was doing it because look, I'm doing something because I don't want nothing in return. But if someone wants to give you something from their heart, you're doing the wrong thing by saying no. Take that, receive that love from that person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then share it with others. You know what I'm saying? This is, it's so important because there's so many people that don't want to accept things because they don't want to go, well, I give just to give. I don't want anything back. Right. You may not want anything back, but don't block their blessing of them blessing you because you think it's not a thing. To, it's not it's not good to receive. It is good to receive. It's one of the best oh. gifts you can give people is to let them have the experience of lighting you up. man. Uh, how many times have you given somebody and you see the smile on their face? How moved is that for you? Don't take that away from people. The best yeah. thing you can do is is receive graciously. Be thankful. Give yeah. gratitude. That's that's where you can come from. You know, it's not about uh, I don't need it. It's about giving the permission for somebody and then being grateful and and and, and responding in gratitude. Yeah. You, you write a chapter in your in your book, an attitude for gratitude. I think it's so so important. And in a way, it can be a tool for forgiveness of ourselves. Because we, in punishment, we in our self-judgment, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, so I'm not deserving of receiving that. And this is a self-punishment. And when you can learn to be, to, to be grateful for what's offered to you and to be gra and, and, and accept in gratitude, that puts you in a different place. That opened up your heart to receiving and it allows you to forgive yourself and just blow away those ideas that you're not good enough. This can just be the beginning of the opening of your heart by doing this. So receiving can be so good for you as an individual to heal yourself of I'm not good enough. Right. <laughs> and you, you hit it. If, absolutely. And, and a lot of times because of our programming and what was told to us as children or how we grew up, we don't think we deserve 
love. We don't think we deserve a good life. We don't think we deserve, we think we're not smart enough or great enough, or we don't have the, what it takes to be successful and happy. We don't think we deserve the relation, a good relationship because of the relationships we've seen. We really don't think this. And, and until we understand that this is not really, we do deserve it, right? We deserve the best life ever. Until you realize that, you're always going to sabotage yourself. It's always self-sabotage because you, you're you going to live the way you think, you wh whatever way you think in which you think you deserve. So if I have something good going, I'm going to sabotage myself right. so I can get back to that dysfunctional relationship or I can get back to that old job because this is what I deserve. I don't deserve to shine my light in my greatness. Whatever. I don't deserve that. Why do I deserve that? Look, I'm a welfare kid, right? Mm -hmm. I'm black. I'm this. I'm that. I don't deserve to have the best things in life. We all do. We all do. We all are deserving, no matter what you have done in your past, because the things that you have done in your past and that are not, let's say, not good, that, that things I've done things that are not good and I would never do them in this current state. But you have to forgive yourself for that right. because that's where you were consciously. Nobody wants to make horrible decisions. Who wants to make decisions that are going to hurt themselves? Nobody really wants to do that. But at the time, this is the best we could come up with. Look, if I steal from that store, in my mind, I need that. And this is the best way That's I know. A win. That's a win, right? <laughs> right? That's a win. I mean, especially if you get away with it, it's you're winning. Right. But that energy of stealing, that energy of violence, that energy, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't just disappear. Right. It's out there. It's out there. And what you put out, the energy is there. And this is the whole thing with karma. It's not saying do bad, you get bad, but the energy created from the things that you do, it doesn't go away. Right. It's there. And and they all and and, and I I actually hate the word bad because everything that I've at one point in my life seen as bad that that I've done personally. I see the value in what I learned from them and that it caused and created change in me. And that change saved my life. I was going down a path of bad where if I didn't get that bad enough, it would have never catalyzed me to change. So I'm grateful the, the bad, even the bad choices I made because I learned from You didn't see the air quotes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I know I'm, you and I are on the same page. You know, well, yeah, yeah. Air quotes. <laughs> but, but the thing about it is when I was saying what bad is there's things I've done to people. Yes. Right? Not to myself, you know, not all the terrible things that I did to myself, you know, harming myself and doing the things I was doing, but right. We, we cannot live in guilt and shame doing because of the things we have done to people that there's no way in the world you'd ever do these things again. You have to understand that that's where you were. And I think a lot of people struggle because a lot of people have done a lot of things that really have hurt people. And I have. I was one of those people. Right. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the best father. I wasn't the best boyfriend. I wasn't the best husband. Right. I sold drugs. I was an alcoholic. And when, when you're drunk, you do a lot of things. You even lower your consciousness even further, right? So you're already dealing with a, a low vibe and then you drink and now it's your decision making is out. It's gone. All the decisions you make, you're unconscious. Like literally sometimes you're blacked out. You know what I'm saying? So to, to forgive yourself for all those things that you have done, you have to understand you. that's where you were. Yep. And sometimes for a lot of people, it's hard because they've hurt their children. They've hurt their spouses. I mean, you even even physically, you know, the things that you have done, you may have killed somebody. Mm -hmm. And that's a, it's a hard deal once you start to wake up and start to tap into who you really are to really accept that this is the pain you caused mm -hmm. somebody or somebody's family. So but we have to get to the point where we can actually forgive ourselves. Say this is where I was. This is what I thought was the best for me at that time. And I got to surrender this. I got to turn this over because it's killing me. And it's, and it's keeping you from doing what you came here to do, which is to contribute to this world, this amazing human being that you are, that each one of us is. Each one of us is unique and we have a place in this world and giving of what and who we are can help so many people. 
So we need to get beyond that, you know, that that self judgment to liberate ourselves to be able to put, be in that place to be able to contribute to society. Because that's where I feel I know I feel personally, where I've had my greatest joys is is connecting with other people from a heart space and and being able to give back. I, I love what I'm doing, you know, g- helping people get healthy, helping people make better choices with their nutrition, helping people get physically fit, because I feel like when, when I was, I, I toured around for four years, went to 48 countries all over the world. I, I lived without money actually for a year just to see if I could do it. And, and I really had to trust in the goodwill of other people. But like you said, I found that place, that aha moment, because I was feeling guilty, like I'm, I'm not making any money, but people are giving me food and helping me out. Is that fair? But when I looked at people and they were so full of love, let me help you. Let me do this for you. I was like, I was giving them the gift of the opportunity to be able to be that for me. And I saw how beautiful that moment was for them. And that if I could give that to them in a way by just being a person in need, that was okay. And that I could remain focused on not earning any money, not doing anything, but just being a better me. I needed to clean up this human being so I could be a better gift to the world, you know? And I think that's what we we forget. Sometimes we're so caught up in the struggle of the daily grind, you know, just trying to succeed in work or trying to succeed in this, that we're not spending the time we need to clean up this part, you know? Because the best gift we have to give this world is our best version of ourselves. And the more we can work on this, the better we will be in relationships, the better we will be in our fitness levels, the better we will be in our overall health, but the better we will be for other people. And that is a gift that you, when you leave here, you'll look back and say, I'm glad I did what I did with my life. And that's that's really what I'm living for. Absolutely. I hear you. You know, just like in the book, it says a pot of soup. <laughs> What, what type of flavor are you bringing to the soup? Yes. Right? You want to bring your best flavor to the soup. Your best, like you said, the best version of yourself. The, the version. There's only one. You're just working your way back towards it. Right? You're just working your way back towards it. My goal is to be in a position to be able to help as many people as I can. Yeah. Right? Whether, you know, be fine, whatever, however that looks. Right. What what position? And that'll bring me so much joy. Right. Just just like this book, I want to get it into institutions. I want it to change people's lives. And I know it has already because I've, I've gotten uh, uh, direct messages and things like that already. And that's what I did it for. Right. That's exactly what I did it for. I didn't do it for fame. I didn't do it for a fortune. I'm like, how many? Lives can we change? What what institutions can I get this in? Can I get into prisons? How about rehabs, mm-hmm. juvenile facilities, uh, where you might be just you tried everything, but everything that you know. But here's something else you can try. Right? Meditation was the last, my last hope. I didn't know what it was going to do. I tried mm-hmm. everything, and guess what? There's always something. It doesn't. Have, it's not going to be the same thing. It's going to give you that moment where you go, "This is really working for me. This has really made me turn the corner because everything else I was doing wasn't working." It could be changing your diet, and then that gives you a connection, right? It cleans out your energy, and you go, "Ooh, mm, you make this connection." It could be meditation, like it was for me, right. and then through the meditation woke me up as far as the diet goes on a subconscious level. Mm-hmm. And then even further cleared my energy up. Mm-hmm. So there's different ways to get there, but you can always get there. There's always hope to get there, to start to change your life. And I gave what, eight, nine, eight, seven, eight things that you can physically do to help you get to that place to help you see something that you haven't seen before in your life, right? When you can't, when you don't see things, you can't make moves accordingly. 
you have to be able to see it. Something has to click. And I think there's many things in this book that you can click with. Yes. And, and I love that you incorporated quotes, like from the John Lennon quote that you did, from a lot of different people, Sadhguru, lots of different people who have allowed that wisdom to come through us. You know, some people have called it the Akashic Records, right? This, this great amount of universal wisdom that if we just open to it, it's a library there for us. Then we it's can there. take out any book we want. So, <laughs> when I put those quotes in there, right? And I put it, the, the demographic is so different from Tupac to yeah. I mean, all different type of people. It's because yes. they all are receiving this information. Yes. It doesn't have to do anything with race, nope. sex, uh, nope. religion. It's nope. universal knowledge. Yes. And it comes to everyone if you're available. And that's why I intentionally puts every people from all different walks of life, all races, all religions yes. to low. Look, this universal knowledge is available and everybody is talking about it. They're just talking about it in a different way. Right. Right. This is one thing that ever connects all the people that I that I put in here as far as the quotes. And they don't know each other. They're mm -hmm. different, different continents. Yeah, all getting the same information, and that's what you said. The uh, uh, that universal knowledge that everybody has access to, but you have to elevate yourself to a certain place, and right. you have to be so open, yes, to receive it. Another thing I heard about, and I know you know about it because you know everything. Um, <laughs> there are certain inventions that came to certain people at the same time in different continents. Yep. Like that information was available and the people that were available to receive it, receive it at the same time. So, for instance, say cars weren't ever here and then someone in Iceland and then someone in Brazil all of a sudden gets this this idea at the same time. That information was available at that time and they were able to receive it. They were in a position to receive this information. So when one, have, person, when one person receives this information and they start vibrating with that signature, because all information is a vibration. I mean, if you if you know anything about quantum physics, I'm not talking hoodoo guru spiritual stuff. Right. This is real hardcore science. All information is vibration. If you look at our DNA, it's encoded with vibratory signatures. And that is what where our vibration is in that, you know. It's pretty funny when you hear the all the spiritual teachings in scientific quantum physics now is is basically all the spiritual teachings I've learned just ex explaining it in a scientific way. It's it's really neat that our science has gotten to the level finally. Of, yeah, of, it's merging. It's merging. It's it's coming one and the same. It's just different ways of expressing that same deeply understanding of the way the universe is constructed. When we tap into this, it's very powerful and it's very liberating. We're, we're getting close to the hour mark, so I want to talk a little bit, make sure how people can get this. Love Over Fear, it's an awesome book. Uh, I, I keep this by my bed stand, uh, nightstand it on my bed. I pick it open and just read a little bit out of it, ponder on those moments, let it filter into my dreams and subconscious. I wake up feeling so awesome the next day, every day. Blessings to you, brother, for, for writing Thank this you. book. The link for it, you can purchase the book on Amazon. I see it's also available on eBay and even Walmart.com. So it's out there. Just type in Love Over Fear Monk book. Um, love to have you back again. Just such an awesome being, my friend. I am yeah, so right, right, right. happy and proud of you for the place you've elevated from where you've come from. You could have taken such a different path and you chose different. Yay. I love Clean Machine so much, I had to get our logo. <laughs> you can see, and that's where I came up with the logo. If you guys don't already know, uh, Clean Machine is uh, the logo is the flower of life, it is the oh. sacred geometry. Uh, that you see on, on Monk's tattoo. It is old as the hills, as they so to speak. This is the geometry of the entire universe. And for me, you can see in the center of the of, of the logo, I took the flower of life, and this is nature or the greenness, because really for us, our connection with nature is a path 
that you can find this empowerment too as well. But whatever way you do that, whether it's through fitness or meditation or health or amazing, great books like this to help guide you along the way, you know, find that place because when you get to that place of empowerment and can really bring yourself to the world in your fullest, it's such a joyful experience. And you can end up interacting beautiful, wonderful things to you and life gets so much easier, I promise you. Thank you so much, my brother. Yeah, always good chatting with you, my friend. And uh, thank you for taking it to a higher level. Check out Monk's book. We'll soon uh, also have the link up on uh, our website too as well. We're working on getting that done soon, but you can just type it in Google and amazon.com has it. Check it out. Thank you, Monk, uh, for being Thank on the you. show. It's always a pleasure, my friend. I appreciate you. Well, stay tuned. We're going to have more good stuff for you. And again, we're tying in all of the different elements, Talk, people talking from a business perspective, from a spiritual perspective, from a physical uh, health and athlete perspective. I want to show you that there's a commonality with all these different perspectives, and that's believing in yourself that you can be the best person you can and enjoy life to the fullest. That's what I'm hoping to bring to you through what I do and by bringing some of these amazing people like Monk on this show to share their perspectives as well. We'll see you next week.